Alrighty, guys. We're going to be reading Ever After High, Fairies Got Talent. Um, we're actually on part 10. Uh, I am sorry that I haven't been reading it that much. I am very busy. Um, but now I have the time and I'm going to start having time to read this. So, um, so Ever After High, Fairies Got Talent. Part 10. We will be ending up on chapter 10. Page 104 and 105. And here we go. The rest of the week passed quickly. Faybelle kept up with her various duties. She wrote her speech for Villain Club. It started out as how being full of goodness impairs one intelligence, but that got complicated, so she changed it to how being nice makes you stupid. She couldn't find any academic research to support this claim so she used her own op observations as examples the speech got a standing ovation from her fellow villains she also wrote a new cheer for religions spell say what say what spell say what we do we spell we spell for you there was some discussion among team members since not all of them could cast spells and they worried uh, that the audience might think they were talking about spelling as a spelling words. So, Faybelle had the fairies release puff of fairy dust at the end to make it clear that they were talking about magic. And even though they hadn't had a few tumbles, the introverted pyramid was coming along nicely. In addition, Faybelle completed all her throne work assignments, took Spindle for daily walks, kept her wings in tip-top condition, and maintained a air of superiority, but all the while she kept that forgotten whittled wing spell in her mind. She unleashed it as a perfect moment. Farah would be foiled. Poor little thing wouldn't know what hit her. But there was no reason to feel sorry for Farah. In one month, she'd be fine again, back to normal. It's not like whittled wings would be such a big deal to her because. She walked most of the time, at least that was what Faybelle told herself every time she tried to imagine what it might be like to have whittled wings. Saturday finally arrived. Auditions were at noon. You look different, Bunny said. Where's your uniform? I can't wear a cheer hexing uniform for the, a theater audition. That would be idiotic. Faybelle stood in front of her full-length demeanor. She'd chosen a white dress that would ascended a tiny crystal. She'd also selected a pair of glittery shoes. When the light hit her, she glowed. Light is power. Her mother had often told her never to hide in the shadows. What about a hat? Bunny was particularly fond of the black top hat. A hat is one of the most necessi necessary accessories. A hat. Faye Bell scowled. Those Wonderlanding villains were always talking about the tea and hats. Why would a queen wear a hat? Then she realized what was missing. A crown. Of course, she opened the closet and searched for shelves until she found a tiara made of crystal thorns. She plopped it onto her head and the outfit was complete. She didn't thank Bunny for the suggestion. After all, a crown was not a hat. Will you watch the spindle while I'm gone? Sure, Bunny said. I'll take him for a walk. Fairbell handed a leash and a bag of treats to Bunny. Then she kissed Spindle's fluffy head. She, He wagged his tail and kissed her back. Break a leg, Bunny called to Faybell, flew from the room. Nervously, energy coursed through her, which was odd. Faybell was used to performing in front of crowds. She'd given plenty of speeches, and she'd led her cheer hexters countless times, but she was so jittery, it felt as if actual pixies were tripped inside her stomach. What? Oh my gosh. Was that even possible? Had someone cast a spell on her? Of course not. She was being paranoid. It was normal to feel a bit nervous before using dark magic. At least that was what she told herself. Her plan was this. Just before Farah 
deliver her monologue. Faybelle would cast a spell, un- unable to fly. Farah would give up the Faybelle, would swoop in and just sh- just steam. How really real wicked fairy queen commanded the stage. Then she'd call her mother and share the good news. The dark fairy would be so proud. Students were miling outside the charmatorium. Some were practicing monologues, others were chatting. As soon as Faybelle landed on her steps, Blondie Locks stuck a mirror pad in her face. The red recording light was flashing. Hi, Faybelle, she said. I was hoping to get an interview before the audition. Did you know that most of my viewers are predicting a landslide win for Farah? Faybelle glowered at the perky reporter. This isn't an election. Who cares what your viewers think? She flicked her wings, sending the gust of air right into the Blondie's face. Blondie coughed. But do you agree with them? Do you think Ferris stands a better chance? No comment. But as she fluttered up the steps, she realized that her coldness could draw suspicion later. When everyone was trying to figure out why Pharaoh's wings had wilted. So Fabel turned back around. Oh, Blondie. She called with a little wave. Blondie held up the mirror pad. I wish Farah the be- very best. And I know that Justine will be fair in her selection. It took every ounce of focus not to cringe. After saying those words, what a load of Pegasus poop. She waved again and forced a smile. Wow, maybe she was talented actor after all. Blondie smiled back. It was crowded inside the lobby, but the chorus of familiar voices drew her attention. Faybelle! There she is, Faybelle, Faybelle. She's the one. She's the one who makes auditions fun. Stop pushing me. You stop pushing me. Her six hex- her six hexters shoved the elbow their way around the other students until they were standing next to their captain. Each were sipping from a hocus latte cup. For you, one for them said, handing Faybelle a mocha frappe, her favorite. You look amazing, so amazing. You deserve this part. You so deserve this part. Stop mirroring me. You stop mirroring me. Okay, enough, Faybelle said. She took a sip. Maybe a sweet beverage would settle her stomach. Now you know what you're supposed to do, right? You. She'd given them specific instructions after practicing yesterday. Yes, we're supposed to clap. Extra lab and cheer when you're done with your audition. But we don't clap and cheer for anyone else. Only you. Faybelle snotted. Having her own fan club was hexterimy convenient. She checked her Miri phone. It was almost noon. Let's go, team. Like a flock of birds, they flew across the lobby. Students jumped out of the way. Whoa, Humphrey Dumpty called as the wobbled nearly falled over. And the Charturium was one of the most impressive rooms at Ever After High. Hundreds of seats faced a glided stage. The stage was graced by blue velvet curtains. There were plush box seats and dozens of golden chandeliers. Faybelle and her he- cheer hexters chose seats in front row. Center. Faybelle glanced around until she spotted Ferris sitting next to Breria and Ashlyn, and a few rows behind them. Faybelle hadn't dressed like a wicked queen. She looked like as she did her with her blue dress and blue hair. She waved. Faybelle forced herself to wave from the audition, as based on the appearance alone, Faybelle would definitely get the part. But Alice. That was not how it worked. There were other familiar faces as well, such as Dexter and Daring Charming. Faybelle's roommate, Michelle, was there too, along with a bunch of students from the Glee Club. Humphrey hurried in, followed by some student dancers. Justine took the stage. Welcome, everyone, she said, clipboard in hand. Her denim jacket that had director embroidered on the back. Welcome to the audition for Once Upon a Spell. If you're here for Fabulous's Flutes tryouts, they've been moved to room 201. 
A couple of kids with flutes scrambled out of their seats and left. Justine continued, I speak for everyone in the theater club. When I say we're excited to see so many new faces, I hope you're not nervous. We are all friends here, so please don't worry too much. There are a lot of parts, and if you don't get the lead, you can find room for you in the chorus or on the dance team. We're all friends, Faybell thought. She held back the snicker that would, you would think. So this is how we're supposed to proceed. First, we'll have auditions for the Melanogy Princess and Forgotten Prince and the Elderly King. And then for the Wicked Fairy Queen. Then we'll take a break for auditions for the remaining roles. Each character will come up here and deliver a two-minute monologue. Callbacks will be next week. Callbacks, Faybell blurted. Justine squinted. Faybell's gown was glowing beneath the charmatorium chandeliers. There will be callbacks in case I can't make up my mind. I will narrow it down to two actors and they will come back to auditions a second time. There are lots of students auditioning, so I might have trouble deciding. For instance, there are ten girls trying out for the Melanogy Princess. Ten! Faybell grunted. Then sank low in her chair. This was going to take all day. She stretched her legs and rested her feet on the edge of the stage. Okay, let's begin, Justine said, reading from her clipboard. First up is Briar Beauty. Faybell watched as one by one of the actors took the stage. Byra was okay, but she kept yawning. Ashlyn was really good. Michelle seemed a little nervous at first, but midway through her performance, she seemed to gain confidence and pulled off a good audition. Who knew Fish could act? Faybell whispered to the cheer hexters on her left, who hexed the comment of the other cheer hexters. They all giggled. As the auditions continued, the cheer hexters paid no attention, hexing one by one, passing the time. Fibo went over the spell in her mind again and again. Seven guys tried out for the part of Forgotten Prince. Dexter Charming and Dari Charming both auditioned. Dexter, like Michelle, lacked confidence. So his voice was hard to hear, but his performance didn't improve midway through. If anything, he seemed to get more nervous. Daring, Daring, however, strode it all over the stage, blinding everyone with a smile. He was certain to get the lead. He even forgot his lines, which was perfect way apart. Humphrey Dumpy was the last tryout. Sure, he was the prince in real life, but Fabel couldn't imagine him being the cast of leading man. He was a tech geek who was always tripping on stuff. He'd end up on the chorus for sure. What an epic bore, Fabel whispered under her breath. You're so right. Hextremy is boring. Total torture. Fa fairy fail. Making me all the way to the evil queen. Get your elbow off my armrest. Okay, next up. We have the role for the wicked queen, Justine said. Fabel sat up straight. She's been so focused on her spell, she hadn't even... Notice that the triads for the elderly king has passed. There are three names on the list, so we'll begin with... Excuse me, Faybell leaped off her feet. What do you mean, three? It's supposed to be me and Farah. Justine read her clipboard again. It looks like a new name was added to the morning. What the heck? Someone had dared added her name to the audition sheet. Who would do such a thing? Faybell looked around the room and each glided chairs, even up the balcony. Her gaze landed on two fairies who were sitting in the back row. She didn't know them. They were first years. Which one was auditioning? Drat. The spell was designed to wilt the wings of one fairy. Now she had eliminated two fairies. Her thoughts spun in as she tried to figure out what to do. And then the perfect solemnitude popped into her head. She had a cheer hex spell to increase its Pelocity, give me those, she said, grabbing a pair of pom-poms. I gotta do something. We'll come with you, the cheer hexer said in the unison. No, stay here, she hissed as she lifted into the air. Justine shielded her eyes with her hand. Bail, where are you going? You're up first. Uh, I need to make an important call. Let Farrah go first. I'll be right back. And out the door she flew. After landing in the lobby, Fabel closed the shamatorium doors behind her. Fortunately, the lobby was empty. Something else must have caught Blondie's attention because she wasn't hanging around waiting for the scoop. 
There were no time to waste. Farah would soon be on stage delivering her perfect monologue, proving to everyone that she could act. Pom-poms in hand, they both cheered the spell. Wings of beauty, soft and bright, drop the wilt and bring no flight. She batted her lashes and she put her hands on her heart as if a concern. Oh, she was good. Fabel stood alone on stage. All the color drained from her face. My, my, my wings. She shambled. She spun around. They won't unfloral. She spun. She spun around. They weren't on floor. She spun again. Her long, beautiful hair twirling her. What's wrong with them? This will never hap. This has never happened. A strangle whispered, escaping her lips. I don't understand. I, I, she turned and looked importantly at Fabel. What's wrong with me? Fabel strutted. How should I know? I wasn't anywhere near you when this happened. She said this loudly so everyone in the shamatorium could hear. You're not accusing me of anything, are you? She clenched her jaw, ready to defend herself if necessary. If magic was suspected, she pointed to the other fairies in the room. There were a compatible of casting a spell as she was. No, of course not, Fabel. Farah's eyes seemed as wide as tea sussers. But my wings aren't working. Do you know what it could be? Has this ever happened to you? Poor misguided creature. She wasn't accusing Fabel. She was looking for her device. Fabel flew onto the stage and stood next to the little good fairy. It was perfect opportunity to showcase her superior physical attributes. She took her time strutting around Farah, pretending to inspect Farah's wings. But in truth, she was giving Justine time to observe the difference between the two fairies. I'm taller, stronger, and much more re regal. Farah's thought, the choice is obvious, and I'm your wicked fairy queen. My, my, this is my mere mystery, Fabel said, fuging confusion as she touched one of the limp swings. The sight of the stricted appendants was indeed shocking. For a moment, Fabel's chest felt a little heavy. She wondered if she has done the right thing, but then she pushed that thought from her mind. She made this tis down. I have no idea why your wings are just hanging there. It's so unattractive. My wings are always working. To prove her point, she lifted off the stage and soared over the audience, skimming their heads. Ashlyn and Brayer ducked. Humphrey fell off the chair and sheer hexters cheered. Fabel, 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 she can fly. She can fly up to the, hey, watch your elbow. You watch your elbow. Fabel landed back on stage. Pharaoh was visible trembled her eyes filled with tears a lump formed in fabel's throat what's going on she was feeling bad of the good fairy no never a dark fairy does not feel bad about casting dark magic justine hurried on the stage i'm so sorry this has happened she said wrapping her arms around Farah's shoulder do you think you'll get better if you take a break or get this drink of water i could try Farah said but fairies never lose the ability to fly Unless they're extremely ill, gasped a rose to the audience. She right, Fabel said, extremely ill. I'm sorry for the disappoint you, Farah told Justine. You said you never, you needed someone who can fly. And if can't fly, I can't audition for the Wicked Fairy. But you still have two others who are trying out. That's right, Fabel said. She zipped around them, then ho hovered. My wings are just fine. But I don't know about the other. She shrieked, interrupted from the back row. Then an another. Fabel could barely contain her smirk. What's going on, Justine? Called. The two first year fairies had leaped on their seats. My wings! One of them cried. Something's wrong with my wings. My wings, too. They strutted around the row, pushing past other students until they bursted onto the aisle. Then they spun around, trying to unfurl their wings. But both set hung limbs of life less. Well, this is going to exactly as planned, Fabel thought. She rubbed her hands together as most satisfied way. Then she opened her mouth and about to tell Justine she was ready for her monologue. And then her six cheer hexters just jumped from their seats.
<sighs> they didn't cheer. They shrieked and wailed as they also discovered useless wings. Faybel, they cried. Faybel, what's happening? Holy hex. She'd been in such a hurry to foil Farah and the other auditioning. Fairies had forgotten that the spell would attack every fairy in the room. Panic welled in her chest. Her heart began to pound. Her wings beat in double time as she continued to hover. She could have made such a rookie mistake. This would be a huge problem for a cheer hexing squad. Regionals were three weeks away, but the wilted wing spell was supposed to last for an entire moon cycle. How could they fly inf in information? She sabotaged her own team. The weight of what she done pressed down on her shoulders, pushing her until she was standing on the stage. Oh, you poor dears, Farrah said. She hurried off the stage and ran up the aisles. Oh, dear, oh, dear, she said as she took the closer look at everyone's wings. We've all been struck by someone's mysterious illness. It's so terrible. Fix them, one of the cheer hexers demanded. That's what you do, right? You make things look better? Oh, what a good idea. I could try. As Vera took her little wand from her pocket, Fabel cr cringed. While she wanted her cheer hexers fixed, she didn't want Farah or the other auditioning fairies to recover. Could fairy go godmother magic actually fix the dark spell? Farah pointed her wand at one of the cheer hexers. A trail of music and sparkle shot out of the wands and... And for a moment, everyone held their breath, waiting to see what ha would happen. The, wi the wings remained limp. Farrah's face fell. I'm sorry, my fairy godmother magic doesn't seem to work on this situation. Faybelle ex exhaled in with relief, and the audition was still hers. But the cheer hexing problem remained. How could she solve that? I wonder if, if it's some kind of virus said Dexter, charming. He stepped onto the aisle, pushed his glasses up his nose. A virus is spreads quickly, and that would explain how many of you got it at the same time. A virus, Justine asked. It makes sense, Farah said. All of the chit-chat is a waste of time, Farah thought. Hey, Justine, do you expect me to stand here all day? Let's do this. Silence fell over the chamatorium. Everyone turned and stared at Faybelle. She realized her mistake. She'd let her guard down. She'd forgotten to act as she cared. Did they suspect? Hey, how come your wings are working? One of the cheer hexters said, asked. Yeah, how come? Fabel held back a gilb. She flickered her wings. There was a perfect aqueduct explanation. She took a few steps forward. Dark fairies have superior immune systems. Centuries of dealing with the dark magic have made us stronger than other fairies. That does make sense, Dexter said with a nod. This seems satisfy the cheer hexers. Besides, they never dare question their team captain and future queen. At least not in public or on her face. Farrah tucked away her wand. I think I sh we should go to the informity. Maybe there's some medicine we can take. I shall escort you, fairy decimal. Dairy cried. He leaped across the seats and bounded onto the aisle. And then with a bow, he asked for the most dashing voice, follow me. Farrah and the other fairies followed along with the Ashlyn, Briar, and Michelle, who wanted to help in whatever way they could. Finally, good riddance. Babel cleared her throat. Are you ready? Justine took her seat. Yes, I guess we'd better get back to business. Go ahead. Babel delivered a monologue, the same one Farrah would have delivered if she hadn't sabotaged. She took her time walking around the stage, allowing everyone to mirror her costume. Then she stood in the center, hands on hips, and maximum visual impact. She unfurled her wings slow motion. She stood in Maleficent, catching the spotlight, casting rainbows upon the walls. And then she flew across the stage, delivering her lines, communing the king and queen for not sending the invitation. As the monologue concluded, she cursed the princess to prick her finger and slept for a hundred years. There was a nary of doubt that Fabel's mind, the part was hers. Confidence coursed through her. She took a long bow since her cheer hex has left. There was no 
fervent applause. A few members of the audience seemed to appreciate her performance, but most looked worried, unsure to how to react. Did they suspect her foul play, or did they think her performance was foul, or was it a fear that she saw in her eyes? When does practice begin? She asked Justine. I'm not busy afternoons with cheer hexane squad, but I can squeeze in the time for dinner. Justine held up her clipboard and pointed to another name. You don't have the part yet. There's still one more person trying out. They both snorted. She left with the other fairies. Remember? No, I didn't. A voice called. I'm still here. Fabel and the spotlight was blinding her. Fabel couldn't see the, who was speaking. She shielded her eyes with her hand and stepped to the edge of the stage. You have to be a fairy to try out for the wicked fairy queen, she said, her eyes scanning the faces. She doesn't have to be a fairy, Justine corrected. She simply has to have wings to be able to fly, not a fairy. What trenchery was this? Who had wings? Who could fly? This is impossible. Then Fabel gazed, stopped, cold and smiled, face K.A. Cupid. And that is the end of part 11. And I will see you guys again.